Good morning, true crime friends. How y'all doing? Hello, hello, hello. Happy Thursday. Look, oh goodness, hang on. There's a lot happening in true crime today, but mostly updates. First, Hannah Gutierrez. You remember Hannah Gutierrez? She was working on that Alec Baldwin movie where um the wait, this thing is a mess. Where the gun went off and the lady got uh, is is unfortunately unalive. Um, Hannah got convicted, and I sincerely hoped that Hannah would not be convicted, even though she was guilty of negligence. It was accidental negligence, but somebody did lose their life, so it's only fair that Hannah goes and sits her behind down for a minute over there in the jail. But. Um, her lawyer just recently filed a, a, an appeal or whatever, filed something with the court that was like, excuse me, court, can you let her out? Can, can, can she come home now? We're, we're going to appeal the whole verdict and everything. Um, but she would like to come home, please and thank you. This is the issue that I have with this. Number one, from both sides, right? Hannah, because it's her first time offense, she's unlike, unlikely to do any serious real time, right? So I'm like, okay, cool. It seems right to me that she would go sit her behind down over there in the jail or prison, wherever, for a few minutes until her sentencing comes up, which happens in another couple of weeks. But if I was Hannah, I would be like, excuse me, I, I can't be free pending you doing whatever, whatever. Why did it take her lawyer so long to file this paperwork? I would have been like, sir, if I get convicted on Monday or Tuesday, I'm gonna need that paper right there in front of the judge. You gonna wait a couple of weeks and then like, mm, were you hot and then packing like, please, P-L-E, wait, backspace, backspace, backspace. Let Hannah out. Oh, wait, that's not two, oh, you, mm -mm, sir. I'm going to need you to type faster. I'm going to need you to immediate or just have it there in your briefcase. She got convicted. Here's a piece of paper. Uh, can you let her go home? Because if it was me, they would be like, um, the head gossip is crying so hard. She just wet her pants. So somebody's going to need to get a mop and uh, something to cart her out of here. Cause we can't be cleaning up wet pants. Like, mm -mm, I, oh, oh, I would not do good. I would not do good. Which is why I don't break laws. From time to time and periodically, I do speed. I do. And I told you about the time that I drove down the street where they had blocked it off. That They said the street flooded. And yes, sometimes the street floods, but the water usually recedes. If they don't take down those barriers fast enough, I still need to use that shortcut. So I just drove around the barrier and went down the street. And the cop was like, boop, boop. Ma'am, did you see this street was closed? And I was thinking to myself, yeah. I always drive around them barriers, though. He said, man, why did you drive down this street? And I said, um... And so while I was trying to think of a convincing lie, um, a convincing version of my story, another call about an important crime came in. And then he was just like, okay, just be safe. And then he left. And I was thinking to myself, can I finish down the shortcut? Because I, I would like to just... I, I promise you my car won't be swept away in water. Although it might, I don't know. But um, I didn't think it would be, and I was willing to roll the dice. And then it occurred to me, um, Kathy, you just got a break whereby this man did not write you a ticket. Maybe you should go around. So I did a big old Yui in the street, and I went around it. I went down another street. But coming home... I went down the shortcut. Yeah, it was a lot of water on that street. But my car did not get washed away as evidenced by the fact that I'm still here. So maybe I didn't learn my lesson. Anyway, had that man arrested me for driving down a closed street with the barriers up and driving around the barrier, um, I, I would I would just pay the fine. I, I, I would not do good in jail. And if I had a lawyer, um, he needs to come down to the jailhouse with the paperwork already in order. Let the heifer go. She's sorry. You see how she's crying. She about to throw up. You want to clean up more pee off the floor? No, you do not. Please let my client go. It would not be cute. The real question, though, is how's Hannah's mama? How's she doing? Mrs. Hannah's mom, I'm not going to use your government name because you deserve some privacy, even though you look like you was this close to um, clunking that uh, prosecutor upside the head, Carrie Morrissey. Mm -mm. That prosecutor, you a danger, girl. <laughs> Hannah's mama looked big, big bad, and she was a big woman. Not like gigantic, but just like a tall woman. And you know they, they believe in gunplay over there, um, quiet as is kept. And his mama's a felon. So um, she might be likely to pistol whip you up. I'm not saying that she pistol whips people. I'm saying she has ways likened unto that of somebody who would pistol whip you. So um, Miss Carrie Morrissey, you in private practice. And you know, a mother's anger is long. Long after this case has gone to bed or whatever, Hannah's mama's still gonna be like, remember that heifer? Remember that time she sent my baby to jail? 
clock you up. I'm not saying she did nothing. I don't see anything. I don't have any insider information. If I did, you know, I'd be on here letting you know, like, girl, you know what I found out. Anyway, um, Miss Prosecutor, Miss Special Prosecutor, you probably not that safe. I I'm just saying, but they gonna wait till Hannah is out of jail uh, for they stalk you and uh, you know slash your tires. I'm not saying they gonna unalive you or something like that. I'm saying you might need um, new sets of tires several times and maybe some you know the windows, the side windows on your car because I hear them side glass is different than the front glass. The front glass hard to break. That side glass, a, a tire ironer do it right in. Not that I know. I don't know nothing about that life. Anyway, I had, sometimes I get on here and I talk too much, possibly every day. Anyway, um, Hannah's mama, girl, I hope you have calmed down. I hope you have had a nice Xanax. I hope you report to your therapist and your probation officer um, that you're just like keeping everything under control. Hannah will be home soon. Her sentencing is coming up in early April, which is just like, what's today? Oh, today's the 21st. That's still a couple of weeks away. Oh, I would be upset if my baby was in jail. Anyway, but this, Alec... I wonder, I almost said Alec Murdoch, Lord Jesus. Alec Baldwin is supposed to go to trial soon. And word came down this week that Alec Baldwin was offered a plea deal similar to what Dave Hall's got. I remember Dave Hall, the safety director, who was also supposed to, also supposed to keep this thing from happening. He was, Dave Halls took a plea deal where it was like six months of unsupervised probation and promise you won't do it again, something like that. They prom they offered Alec Baldwin a similar deal and then withdrew the deal. Really? I Alec Boo Boo, why didn't you take that deal? But I could imagine that um, Alec accepting that deal would open him up to more suits on the civil side. Like, oh, you pled guilty, so just pay us all your money. And um, Alec got all them kids to feed. He had like seven, eight, 65 kids with that woman who's pretend Spanish. So, um... That pretend Spanish wife is high maintenance. She got to keep up her Duolingo. She got to keep having babies. These surrogates are not going to hire themselves. She got 12 more babies in the works. All I'm saying is that um, Alex, from a criminal liability standpoint, maybe should have taken that deal. But from a civil liability standpoint, uh, no. He kind of couldn't take a plea deal because he enjoys money and living in big mansions. And now that's kind of off the table for him. Good luck, Alec. I will be perched and ready and watching that case because Miss Carrie Morrissey, oh, she's feeling very confident. But, um... Alec Murdoch's, uh, oh goodness, Alec Baldwin's lawyers, they have no chill. They are big money lawyers. They are filing absolutely everything. And they, um, Hannah, I believe she got a free lawyer. Now, was he a private attorney? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you saw him in court on his phone looking up the laws on court TV. Like, sir, if you have to stand up and on your phone, look up the laws, I kind of don't want you as my lawyer. Um, Alec Baldwin, his lawyers know the law off the top of their head, and they working overtime, and they are beating Carrie Morrissey's behind in just pleadings alone. They are wearing this heifer out, all the way out. She got like an $800,000 budget for this prosecution. Um, I'm willing to bet that uh, Alec Baldwin spent that yesterday in lawyer's fees. Man, you about to be out lawyered, and I'm about to be perched and ready to watch. I'm gonna be like, mm-hmm, I need to see everything. Do I need to take vacation time? Probably not. I can one little earbud. One little earbud. If you see me in a meeting with one little earbud, don't say nothing to me. You know what's going on. Don't say nothing to me. In other news, listen. Court TV has a case that they are calling the small town murder. And I was like, hmm, what madness have we here? I need to find out everything. This is the state of New Hampshire versus Viral. Viral. This is a dude who was um, a narcotics enthusiast. He was also into the sales and marketing of narcotics, but mostly he was a big, big narcotics enthusiast. And um, he was using a lot of that narcotic and he was like paranoid and slightly crazy and real high and what Whatever. And he went over, he decided in his paranoia that his boss, like his, his narcotic boss, that that guy's girlfriend was an informant based on absolutely nothing, based on the fact that he was using like a lot of methane and whatever else he was using. He's using a lot of drugs, a whole, whole, whole lot of drugs. He decided she was an, an informant. 
for no reason. And he went to her house and was like, hey, girl, how you doing? Like, I just, I'm here to hang out and see how you doing. You're doing good. You're doing good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then um, the, the, the crazy got on his little brain, got kind of ticklish. And he um, jumped her and stabbed her a whole bunch of times. It was terrible, a brutal crime. And she had a friend in the house and he unalived the friend too. And then he took the two of them and like wrapped up their bodies and hid them in a crawl space under the house and then uh, cleaned up. It was cold outside. This is New Hampshire. First of all, why do people live there? It's cold. Anyway, so he was like, oh, some of the bodily fluids are here just frozen on the porch. So he went to the Walmart, because of course he did. And he got some rock salt and other, a, a tarps, a shovel, other assorted things you would need to cover up a crime over there in the Walmart murder aisle. And he's spread out the rock salt and did whatever he had to do. And then went home and took a shower, enjoyed some more narcotics. And his friend was like, why you look so frazzled? And he's just like, oh, I had a rough day. Oh my goodness. And this friend was like, okay. But the friend recalls it specifically because he came home sort of frazzled and smelling heavily of body odor. Ooh, we, we talk about your body odor here on the TV? Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, He was smelling heavily of body odor. He was tired. He was crazed. He was whatever. He went and took a shower, then went back over to that house, did some more work to cover up his evil doings. And then um, when everybody started looking for these two ladies, he was helping in the search. He was like, oh, I looked all over the place. I couldn't see him. And I'm like, okay, that's what the state says happened. I wonder what their evidence is. And then the state came with a evidence. Sir, uh, Mr. Viral, Timothy, I think his name was. Sir, why, why is this the case? The state has so much evidence. They have... Um, him on video going into the house. Him, I believe his phone was there at the time of the crime. His fingerprints are all over the scene. His DNA is all over the scene. They have him on the Walmart video buying the rock saw and spray paint and all these other things that were used in the crime. There's an epic ton of evidence against this guy, but he's pleading not guilty. Okay. Um, I admire his chutzpah and his attorney has a very, very tough hill to climb. So I was like, first I listened to the defense opening statements by mistake. I was like, let me just see what this case is about. I see there's opening statements and I clicked it. And as I was listening to it, I was like, oh, this sounds like the defense opening statement. But the defense, I didn't know anything about the crime. Listening to the defense opening statements, I was like, okay, okay. He sounds innocent. He sounds innocent. And then they started getting into the evidence. I was like, wait, his DNA was there. They have him on videotape. His fingerprints are all over everything. Literally, the man, the, the drug dealer boss had video cameras in his house. This defendant is on video in the house at the time of the crime. Sarah, what? Listen to the, normally, whoever I hear first, I'm like, okay, that is implanted in my brain. Now, let me just see what the other side has to say. Normally, you hear the prosecution first. In this case, I heard the defense first, and I was like, why are we here? This dude is saying he didn't do it. They have him. He's, but here's the thing. The investigation was a little bit sloppy, even though there still remains an epic ton of evidence against this guy. Um, the defense was a little bit, uh, the, the prosecution was sloppy. The police work was sloppy. Um, and the original case was thrown out as a mistrial. They had to start all over because there was two or three pieces of evidence that the state forgot to turn over to the defense. So um, the defense attorney was like, I demand a mistrial. And the judge is like, yeah, you deserve a mistrial. Because two pieces of evidence didn't get turned over. But in truth, the hundred the hundred thousand other pieces of evidence, if you just put all them together, it's enough to convict this dude. So I'm watching this case just because I'm fascinated. It's all ridiculous. But also, the most important part was his makeover. Listen, we here at Gossip Rumor and Innuendo are very upfront, LLC, are very upfront about the fact that we are petty and we are shallow. We are not, yes, we want to see like justice be done. Fine, 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 fine. That's all good. Really? I want to see what everybody wore. I want to see, does that jail have a good outfit? Will you need to cinch the waist? Will they have you in scrubs? Will you be in those hideous stripes? Oh, Lord forbid they put you in them all white outfits. That's what, that alone is reason not to go to jail. Them all white outfits, no thank you. But my favorite, favorite thing to see in these cases is the mugshot versus what they look like in court. 
this dude, the criminal, had a glow up. A serious, serious glow. This dude must have lost 100 pounds. He got a good haircut. He got a good suit. I'm like, oh, what's your diet plan? You know, I've been trying to lose 17 pounds for like the past, you know, five, six, 20, 25 months. Anyway, I'm like, oh, you on the jail food diet plan? Are you working out? Are you doing weights? Intermittent fasting, keto? I need to know everything. Are you taking supplements? Although he's been locked up in prison for the unfortunate unaliving of these two poor women. So something tells me he's probably not doing keto, but maybe... I don't know. Do they have keto commissary? I have so many questions. Almond milk? Are you doing like almond, like a plant-based diet? Can you be vegan in prison? How does that work? Can you do kosher? I have so many questions. Anyway, um, the glow up murderer, uh, he gonna get convicted. I I'm telling you right now, it's not a leap. If you just look at the, he gonna get convicted. Unless there's some like loophole that he could fall through. Sir, you're on video, your fingerprints, your DNA, your cell phone, everything puts you there at the time of the crime. But he's like, no, it was not me. My DNA could have gotten there at any time. The thing of me buying all that stuff from the Walmart murder aisle on film, moments after the crime so that I could go clean it up. Um, I was just doing work around my house that was, you know, murder adjacent. I don't, I don't know what his excuse going to be, but that whole case is a mess and I'm here for it. Here for every last bit of it. Last but certainly not least. Yesterday we talked about, what's her name? Kaylin Spondia. I, I didn't mention her name specifically yesterday because I couldn't remember what it was. This is the lady where um, Charles Schwab accidentally put $1.2 million in her account. And she was like, oh, thank you so much, Santa Claus. And she took the money from her account, immediately transferred it to another account, and she commenced to spending the money. Like, who wouldn't? So um, I was like, what happened to Kellen? Kellen? I think that's her. Her name is spelled K-E-L-Y-N. Kellen? Kayleen, Kelly, Kayleen, I don't know. We're going to call her Kellen, like Helen with a K. Anyway, so um, Kellen got this money and she went and she bought herself a car. And you know, I was like, oh, what kind of car she buy? She bought herself a Hyundai Genesis. A Hyundai? Really? Hmm. Okay. I hear the resale value on those is not good. But she was like, I will just buy, I have 1.2 million. I'll just buy a new one in two years. So I'm not worried about it. So she got herself a nice new car and she bought a house. Good for her. You know, I was like, what does the house look like? Is it in a better neighborhood? How come she ain't flee the country? I had many, many questions about this case. So I went on a deep dive and um, she bought herself a cute but modest house. I was like, smart. That's real. That's the way you want to do that. That's a smart way to go. She paid like $118,000 for the house. Oh, well, girl, you could have just bought that in cash. You got yourself a whole bunch of, you could have just bought that house in cash. And from what I could tell, I think she was able to keep the house up. I'm just saying. Um, Turns out, Charles Schwab, Morgan, I think it was Charles Schwab, dropped the charges. What? What, 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 what? Let, let me understand this. You get an accidental $1.2 million dollars. And as long as you have a nice conversation with Charles Schwab, they will drop the charges? Excuse me. Let me open an account at Charles Schwab today. Right now. Right, why am I here talking to you when I could be getting me a Schwab account? This should be in their advertisements. Hi, we're Charles, we are Charles Schwab. And if we accidentally put a bunch of money in your account, we will ask you for it nicely and then drop the charges. She had to return some of the money. Not all the money, not all of it, some of it. And I was like, let me, I had to take off a shoe to do the math on that one. But they put in her account like 1.2 million, whatever, whatever. She only had to return a million. Really, girl? Is she in that, still in that Hyundai? She did not have to do any jail time. She's in a diversion program. Now she did lose her job. So I don't know if that means she can still stay in her house or not stay in her house, unclear. But um, the house that she moved into is a nice up and coming neighborhood. So it was all fixed up, new kitchen, new bathroom. Modest like three beds, one bed, something. Like she didn't splash up. What, if that was me, $1.2 million. They would have been like, where'd that money go? I'd be like, on this $1 million house I'm in. Because, you know, I'm not good with money. I'm not as good with money as I could be. But um, I really admire her restraint. She only spent $100,000. I mean, but she lives in Louisiana. So maybe houses are less expensive than they are here in New Jersey. Child, unclear. But I would have been like, my summer house, my winter house, my spring house, my fall. I would have had a house 
that's for every season if I lived in Louisiana. Uh-uh. So I'm like, wait, 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 wait. They dropped the charges. She didn't have to go to jail. Now, she did get herself a mugshot, and she did get fired from her job, and nobody wants that. And her mugshot is not cute. It's not cute at all. And while I am critical of the mugshots of others, I'm... I'm clear on the fact that um, if I had a mug shot, it would be ugly because I would be crying real hard. They would be like, ma'am, can you wipe the snot off? Your We're going to need you to, ma'am, ma the running, the streaks of mascara. We're going to need you to get the streaks of mascara. Ma'am, we cannot take your picture if you were in the fetal position. We can, you got to have to stand up. I would be crying real, real hard and probably eliminate my bowels among other things. It would not be cute if I got arrested because I am not built for jail. But I'm saying... Um, so yes, her mugshot was bad and who could blame her, but they dropped the charges. I can't get over the fact that they dropped the charges. I kind of want to, um, know more about her deal. Now, listen, all of the legal documents are out here for God and all the world to see because you know, my nosy behind was all over them. Um, so go on and open yourself an account over there at Charles Schwab. It don't take much money to open it because she was just trying to transfer $82 and got 1.2. She's like, oh, a heifer has won the lottery. All right. So um, I hope that you have as lucky a day as Kellen Spondia did. I know I'm about to have me a very lucky day, mostly because I got to spend my morning with you. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.